I'm here in Richmond, Virginia at a 3D printed house built by Alquist 3D. It's the first of its kind in this state. They used a Cobot 2.5 printer to build it. And unlike some of the other homes we've seen, they only printed the exterior walls. Kind of like the Milestone house in the Netherlands, this house will have traditionally constructed interiors, leaving it with a more traditional, kind of comfortable space rather than raw concrete everywhere. It was their first home. Their founder will tell you all about the journey starting from scratch and building up to where they are now capable of building this home looking forward to building 20 homes at a time in the future without further ado let's get on to that i'm zachary manheimer i'm the ceo and founder of alquist we are a 3d printing concrete company uh, based in america we're based in iowa uh, but this print here is in richmond virginia and what you're seeing behind me is our first home print of a 1500 square foot three bed two bath home that is here in the Midlothian neighborhood on the south side of Richmond. And this was our first home that we did and we wanted to make sure that we were doing something that fit the neighborhood, that really fit in with everybody around here. The neighbors uh, have been incredibly excited. They come over here every day as we were doing the printing. And that's why we went for something that was uh, uh, very approachable, a home that that doesn't necessarily, you would say, oh, a robot made this, or this was 3D printed. We wanted something that fit the neighborhood. In the future, we'll do other designs. We have multiple designs we're working on, but this one, we really wanted something that fit the space. Uh, this was a project in collaboration with Virginia Tech. Uh, Alquist collaborated with Virginia Tech to get a grant from Virginia Housing here in Virginia. And that was funding to get a printer purchase from Cobot and also to build this home. This home will be finished being built out by October and will be sold to a family here in the Richmond area. This is our big southern porch here in Richmond, Virginia. We wanted to make sure we had a really nice big porch. It's gonna be have a truss over it here, a nice porch swing right here, something that you can really relax on and be in front of the incredibly loud road that's right across the street. Uh, so we'll walk in right here. This is our front door and we go into a shared living and kitchens area. So this is the living room here, and kitchen space will be right here. This is a large island. It's set here, and right about here are the cabinets along the wall and your kitchen sink and stove right here. Uh, going back about this way will be a short hallway that leads to laundry area right here, uh, uh, bathroom right here, and then into three bedrooms. So the master bedroom will be behind me right here, which will have its own master bath. And then there'll be two smaller bedrooms split right here, each with their own window and closet. And that's the home, 1,500 square feet. We're gonna be putting a trusted roof right on top. Uh, we've already got the electrical and plumbing run through. The slab went in about a week ago and everything's looking good. And this was in pretty amazing for us to figure out. In only five weeks, we were able to get the printer from Copenhagen, get it out of the box, troubleshoot about a million things, and print our first 3D home. We only printed the exterior walls of this home, uh, 150 layers. Uh, this home, we didn't want to bite off more than we can chew with the first one, so we only did the exterior. We're going to be stick building all the interior walls. The other homes that we do this year and next year, we'll be 3D printing all the walls in the home. But what is going to be a dividing here is a center point right here where the cabinets are going to go across. This will all be stick built drywall right here. And the hallway that leads to the bedroom will be the same. Same with the bathrooms on both sides in the master and just off the other two bedrooms, the junior bedrooms right here. So that will all be stick built here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, the roof will be trusted that we're putting on here. And then we had uh, a lot of debate about how we want to showcase this home and make sure people know that it's 3D. The front of the home is going to remain exactly as it is. The other sides of the exterior, we may be doing some stucco treatment. We're still talking through that right now. On the interior, we want to really make sure that we have the uh, 3D look. So the wall that's right along here that goes along the living room kitchen will remain as 3D. Everything in the kitchen and the living room will stay as the concrete. In the bedroom area, we wanted better acoustics. We're going to be adding some drywall to those areas there. In terms of fixture, we have an incredible interior designer called Alt Design out of Des Moines, Iowa, that's uh, designing the interior of the home. 
Cromwell Architecture is our architects uh, at a Little Rock, and then RMT Construction is our general contractor. They're here in Richmond, and our two other partners, Project Homes and Better Housing Coalition, are the two nonprofit groups that we're working with to help identify the right family that's going to be calling this place their home. In the windows, we're going to be framing these up with two buys right here. The insulation, you can see what we're going to be, we're going to be doing spray foam directly into the cavity. So we have an eight inch gap uh, between the two whites. The whites are about two inches thick and we're going to be doing spray foam right into there uh, for this one. We're experimenting with other types of insulation that we're going to be looking at in the future. We want to get to a more environmental reflection point where we've got something that is, you know, concrete's great, but it's far from the most sustainable material. So we're experimenting right now with several different substances that we think can be more uh, environmentally friendly down the road. We're probably six to eight months away from really being able to use any of those pieces. Some of the challenges we had with this home, we really wanted to print this home two times before we actually did the actual home. The problem is, is due to COVID and some other issues, the printer was delayed uh, a few months. And because of that, we had to just print right away because we are in a deadline with our grant uh, to have this home completed uh, by the end of October. So we went ahead and did it. We did prototype for a few weeks and the crew from Cobod were terrific. They were over here with us on the ground troubleshooting all the issues that we had. One of the major issues we had, and you can probably see the sweat on my brow, is the heat. Once we hit about 90, 95 degrees, uh, we had to stop. Now, we have since found a way to get past that, but in the first couple weeks of experimenting with this, we really didn't know what to do. The other issue that we had is that this is the first ever BOD 2.5 printer in the world. We had the first one that's operational. So that came with some software concerns and issues that we had to work through, but the Cobot team was working there directly side by side, literally on the ground with us. Uh, shout out to Matthias and Alma for being here with us and helping us figure all that out and the good times we had throughout those couple weeks together. This was a collaborative effort. In the end, there's well over 300 people that worked to bring this to fruition and really figure out how we can make housing that's affordable. And we still have a lot more to learn, but this was a great first project. Some of the other concerns we had, as you can see the walls here, we've got uh, this area here that's smoother. This is the ribbing. Initially, we wanted to use the fin that is on the printer to slice across the concrete and make a more smooth surface. The problem that we had was with the type of concrete that we had and the temperature that was happening, uh, the concrete was drying too quickly and the fin couldn't cut it. So we made the decision early on to say, you know what, we're going to go with the rib look and we're going to see how we do and we're going to continue to experiment. I should say Quickcrete is the company that we worked with for, they supplied all the material. Uh, they also gave us uh, much of the material as a donation, which was incredibly helpful. Those guys, not only did they help us that way, they were also here on the ground with us, their engineers, helping us figure out the right mix. A shout out to Anoop for actually figuring out the right mix that we needed to have. He kept coming up here from Atlanta to help us figure out how, we, how to do it properly. We couldn't have done this without them. There were so many people that got in and fixed this early on. We had a problem uh, the second week where the hose got clogged and we almost lost the hose. We did lose the hose but we were able to fabricate a new piece for the hose because one of the guys laying the foundation for another concrete company who happened to be here walked over and he said, oh yeah, I know how to fix that. Come over to my shop, we'll weld it real quick and we'll fix it. And so Matthias and a few other guys hopped in the car, went over there, welded the piece, and we got back to work. That's really the amazing nature of this project. How many people chose to help, to get involved, the collaborative nature of this piece, which is ultimately what we're really trying to do at Alcos. So, you know, you can see here a few other inconsistencies, and this happened on this side of the house much more so than any other side. And so that's one of the reasons why we're choosing to do drywall also for the acoustics in the bedrooms. But what you're looking at was the first house that we ever printed. And so we still have a lot to learn and a long way to go. We're uh, several months, if not years away, to really perfecting I think a lot of groups out there are like that. One of the other things that we're working on doing, we're working with Printed Farms down in Florida, we're working with Perry in Texas, those are the other two groups here in America that have Cobot printers. We want to create a 3D printing community because that doesn't exist here in America yet. There's a lot of groups trying to do this and thinking about it, but we need to develop best practices. 
We're not competing with each other. There could be a hundred more 3D companies here in America doing this type of work. There still wouldn't fill the need of the amount of homes that need to be created in our country. So we want that collaborative community to come together and begin to share what best best practices, what we learned, they did something better, we did something better. We talk all the time when we run into problems or they run into problems, we're talking back and forth, which is really creating a really wonderful community. To me, it, it makes me think of like when the uh, internet was first getting created. There were a handful of people that were working on it and everybody sort of knew each other and for the most part, they played nicely in the sandbox. The expansion joints here, you can see that we cut them roughly near every uh, window or door opening. And this served us well. There is some cracking that we have in the concrete, but not nearly as much as we anticipated. We had a great company called Century Concrete that's based here uh, in Virginia, who was with us. They've, they're experts in concrete, and they were here side by side with us and with Quickrete, really trying to figure out the best process to lay each layer and prevent cracking as best we could. One idea on that was the slab. And we chose to print the walls first and lay the slab after. And so far, that's proving to be a pretty good uh, design. Uh, we don't know if that's exactly why we're experiencing less cracking. It may have something to do with it, may not. We're still thinking through that. Other homes that we'll do in the future will lay the slab first and do the walls after. And we're gonna continue to experiment. Some of the imperfections that you see was issues of over extrusion or under extrusion. Part of that was directly due to the heat that we are experiencing. Another issue that we had was the hose, the pulley system for the hose uh, still needs some tweaking. And once we got to certain parts in the house, it was challenging for the hose to move in the right direction, which made the uh, concrete over extrude or under extrude. And part of it's just straight up a learning process. This was our first time doing this. So when you see the, some imperfections like here, and then you see sort of the opposite over here, it's probably due to the heat hitting at that moment and that changing the dynamic of the home itself. So we're still learning how to deal with that. Perry's actually been very helpful uh, with that. One of the things they were sharing with us is that we need to print faster. We did this fairly slow. You know, our, our uh, layer times averaged between 10 and 12 minutes. Really, we should have been between six and eight minutes. But we wanted to take this slow and do it right. That may have been a reason why we had some imperfections, and that's something we're experimenting with right now in Williamsburg. We're about to head over to Williamsburg, Virginia for another video that'll come out later, so make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss the printer in action here in Virginia with Alquist 3D. Our mission at Alquist is affordable housing. We want to fix the housing crisis that exists all across the country. And our primary focus, with the exception of this home, is rural America, smaller communities. And that's where our other company, Atlas Community Studios, we've been working on rural revitalization projects for over seven years, all around the country in about 20 different states. The number one issue in all of these communities outside of workforce development is housing. And so for seven years, we've been trying to figure out how do we solve the housing crisis? How do we drop the cost of housing? And that's when we discovered 3D. And we believe that 3D printing is a, is a way to lower the cost of housing, not the only way, but we think at the moment it's one of the best, and that's why we're pursuing it. So the goal of Alquist is how do we make housing that's affordable across the country for families that are in need of this type of unit. We're gonna be doing single family, multi-family, all different types of housing units, and that's what we're building up currently. But how do we get back to the American dream? How do we get back to affordability so we can put families in their home that they want to live in forever?